My name is Daryl McCoy, and I'm with the Hannibal Fire Department. Today we're here to talk to you about administering oxygen using a non-breather mask. Our goal for this class today is to teach the students how to properly and effectively administer oxygen to a patient that needs it using a non-breather mask. We have some equipment here today that we're going to go over, and I'll show you how to properly use that in just a minute or two. First, we want to talk about our objectives that we want to meet today for all of our students. The first one is we want to be able to understand and identify what equipment we need to administer oxygen with a non-rebreather mask. We also want to understand the basic operation of the oxygen bottle, regulator, and mask. Thirdly, we want to understand and demonstrate how to properly connect the mask to our regulator once it's all assembled. And we want to demonstrate the proper use of the non-rebreather mask, including filling the reservoir and what the minimum pressures are that we want to set our regulator. And lastly, we want to demonstrate the proper application of the mask on the patient's face. And before we get started with all this, quickly I want to mention if you need any more information, you can check resources or references with the National Registry's website on their skills checkoff sheets, or you can also check in your EMS book for your EMT basic. Uh, today we're only going to talk about the non-rebreather mask. There are several other options as far as administering oxygen uh, from a nasal cannula all the way up to a bag valve mask, but today we're just going to focus on the non-rebreather mask. So let's jump right into it. One of the first things we're going to talk about is the equipment we need. To do this, we're going to need an oxygen bottle that has plenty of oxygen in it, a regulator, an O2 wrench, and of course, a non-rebreather mask. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start out by applying our regulator to our bottle. There's a, only one way that it'll go on there, and we'll just go ahead and slide that right on. Fit right in and we'll tighten it down. Uh, once we get it tightened on there, we'll use our O2 wrench and just give it a little, a little snug so it doesn't leak. Then we're going to turn our bottle on, give it just a little crank here, and make sure that we don't hear any oxygen coming out or leaking. Check our valve to make sure that our needle's there in the green uh, or above the red. Go ahead and kick it on real quick. We can hear the oxygen flowing. We'll kick it back off. At this point, we want to take our oxygen mask, and it comes equipped with a tube with an empty end here. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to the bottom half of the regulator. Once we get that hooked up secure there, we want to turn our regulator on to a minimum of 10 liters per minute. We could go up to 12 or 15. And we're going to take a gloved hand and put over the end of the mask there, and fill our reservoir bag up. And then at that point, after you get your mask untangled, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the patient's face, over the head, and on the bridge of the nose. And then pull your straps tight. Notice how you effectively place an honor breather mask on a patient and administer high flow oxygen. Again, at this point, if the patient becomes worse or gets better, we'd have to modify our oxygen delivery. Uh, if the patient becomes worse, we would go ahead and bump that up to a bag valve mask and assist in their ventilations. And if they get better, skin color changes, pinks back up, perfuse better, saturations are better, then we go ahead and kick that back down to a regular nasal cannula. And you can find out more information uh, in later series on those. I want to thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and we'll see you next time.